it's either an act of imperial high-handedness or complete diplomatic incompetence. Uh, he's either trying to act as the emperor of all Asia uh, or he's just succeeded in turning um, the region against him. This is a break from Xi Jinping's mastery of diplomacy in the past where China's one of its greatest uh, uh, pathways has been to divide and conquer the region. So, for example, with Southeast Asia and the territorial disputes that China has with each of the states there, China has insisted on negotiating individually with each to try and maintain the upper hand. But what he's done this week, um, in the last week, is to unite half a dozen countries against him all at once. So it's a reversal of his previous uh, uh, cunning, if you like, um, his previous strategy, and now blundering into a situation which has got a bunch of countries all rising up against him at the same time. And in a fit of imperial peak, uh, he seems to have decided not to go to any of the summits, which um, in the past he's, he's always attended. Yeah. Do you think it's a sign that he might have courted some hostility, given just last week, China has redrawn the boundaries of the South China Sea with the new map, really to suit China's ambitions. This is the big uh, insult, the big slap in the face that uh, Xi Jinping has handed to uh, the ASEAN nations with whom it has territorial disputes and the ones who strongly rejected, publicly rejected this new uh, map from China uh, are the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, um, but also Indonesia. Uh, and because the, the map doesn't just stamp China's territorial claim on Southeast Asia, but also includes India uh, and claims some of the territory in two areas of India, India has also uh, very fiercely rejected this map, uh, as well as Brunei and, although it's not a separate country, Taiwan. So uh, Xi Jinping in a single act has brought all those countries out against him. And the, the affront is not just the claims themselves, which are not new. The, the affront is that China has published this map, uh, called it uh, the, the final map, the standard map is the term, which means no correspondence will be entered into. This is our final position. It flies in the face of the uh, arbitral uh, committee in The Hague, which ruled in 2016 that China had no legal basis for its claims in the South China Sea. And it comes just as these summits were about to convene, where Xi Jinping was scheduled to sit down face to face with the leaders of the affronted countries. Mm. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable uh, either challenge to the power of all of those countries, um, or it's a terrible blunder. Yeah. It is interesting because with a country like India, um, you know, this is a country he'd been courting through the BRICS nations um, to be aligned with China, to, to, um, to, to come into the fold and to create the separate sort of economic bloc. But it only seems to be on Xi's terms. Has he, has he, you know, has he run into difficulties trying to do that? Yes, he has. Uh, so, Two weeks ago, you mentioned the BRICS uh, summit. BRICS uh, stands for, it, it's a loose um, grouping of countries. They don't do much, but they do meet the, at the leader level once a year. Uh, it was originally convened by Russia. Uh, BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And uh, Xi Jinping has decided to take over this group and use it to extend China's power in the world and to counter the US. And at that, on the sidelines of that summit, uh, he took aside Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, in an attempt to heal their, the breach that they've suffered. And that breach was over their territorial clash uh, over the shared border they have in the Himalayas. And in that conversation, uh, as I reported, according to a leading Indian strategic analyst, C. Raja Mohan, that uh, Xi Jinping offered uh, to put the dispute aside and return relations to normal. Modi uh, rejected the olive branch and said, you have to walk back your aggression uh, before we can think about going back to normal. Uh, and then that's followed by Xi Jinping publishing this um, very cheeky uh, or even outrageous map making territorial claims on India, uh, which just puts beyond the pale any prospect of a diplomatic rapprochement with India. So that 
that relationship is now worse than it was, although Xi Jinping was two weeks ago trying to heal it. Yeah. Do you think he, this departure from this, you know, from diplomacy, from um, trying to bring people into the fold and follow China's path is just ideological? Do you think it's almost, it's almost starting to look delusional on his part that he can rewrite history in so many ways? Yes, he seems to expect that uh, everyone will simply bow to his diktats and do as Beijing says, in which case he is deluded uh, and the evidence of the country's reactions should demonstrate that. Uh, and his reaction to their objections uh, is not exactly uh, conciliatory or even mature, simply to say, oh, well, if that's your reaction, I'm not going to turn up at your summits, mm. further offending the summit hosts, which are Indonesia and India. Um, so it, it is starting to look a bit delusional and maybe that's what happens with when you're the ultimate dictator and no one at home is prepared to ever tell you you're wrong. Uh, and as I, as I quoted the uh, eminent sinologist, the Australian sinologist Jeremy Barme saying, every day when Xi Jinping drives in or out of the Zhongnanhai leadership compound in Beijing where he lives and works, emblazoned on the entrance uh, is the Mao era slogan, long live the glorious, magnificent and infallible Chinese Communist Party. Mm. Maybe it's gone to his head. Maybe he started to believe it really is infallible. And yeah. You talked about the countries that had talked out against this new map. Australia wasn't one of them, though. Why not? Yes, really quite interesting, uh, although, um, you know, it, it offends Australia's basic principle that the South China Sea should remain free and open and not subject to these uh, unilateral Chinese claims, China, Australia said nothing. But I think what, what we're seeing is really very interesting here, Bev. We're not seeing Australia saying, we are seeing Australia doing. And in a couple of days, Anthony Il Albanese will be turning up in Manila on the front line of this territorial dispute against China, dispute between the Philippines and China. Uh, the first visit by an Australian Prime Minister to the Philippines in over 20 years, and he'll be standing side by side with the Philippines and demonstrating solidarity in their confrontation with China. It's going to play out uh, for some time yet. Good to talk, Pete. Thanks so much. Pleasure, Bev.